Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. You are tuning into this broadcast on the World Wide Web, and you are tuning in to a segment that it's interesting to note out of 12 segments that we have produced in bringing you a series of It's Rainmaking Time. This is one of the most important segments we can be bringing you. And it is, in fact, the completion of our series of It's Rainmaking Time on the web. That is, before we do any other series, this is the completion of this particular series. And it's about sacred space. How a place is not necessarily a space. And how they're distinct. For example, how many of us have walked into someone's home, a place of business, a hotel, a restaurant, an outdoor garden, and could feel something in the air that's in the space? Well, we walked into the place, we've all felt this, but every place has an atmospheric texture, an energy which emanates unique vibrations, just like people do. And for thousands of years, an entire science and ancient teaching has been operating around the entire world that's very important. It's so important that ancient peoples have gathered together in what they call sacred space to conduct ceremonies that are very important. We've invited a very prominent steward here tonight who has many, many years of experience facilitating sacred ceremonies. She is the CEO and founder of Shambhala Feng Shui Institute. She's been interviewed many times on this subject. Melinda Joy Miller is nationally known as a master feng shui teacher, lecturer, and celebrationist of all things, with several books, including Rainbow Dancer, Walking the Medicine Wheel of Peace and Color. She has an extensive background as a psychotherapist in Jungian psychology, child development, medical, excuse me, metaphysical healing, dowsing, and shaman studies. But the truth is that she's one of the few people that can really transmit what the sacred is about for you and me so we can bring it into our homes and our environments in this crazy chaotic world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's rainmaking time is very proud to bring you Melinda Joy Miller. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. I think I'd like to begin with you tonight in helping those of us that are not familiar with what is the distinction of a private and a cherished, a cherished space as distinct from a sacred space? And is there a difference? Well, I feel that certainly around the earth, on the land, there are so many places that are very, very sacred because the energy there is so beautiful and so... Um, pristine, perhaps. However, because of doing the feng shui for so many years, the Shambhala feng shui is a way to create a sacred space. So what we really, everyone can do is, is really make your home, make your office a sacred space, which means that it has the sacred in it. And one of the ways, an easy way to look at this is to bring the earth into your home because the earth is sacred. Just stones and pictures of the earth just bring all these beautiful, um, everything that's around us, that lives around us, the trees and the flowers. We all know that if you bring a whole vase of fresh flowers into your house, the energy of that makes your house a very special place. So sacred can be very special. And everyone is special. And children, children now, they need to live in homes that have that sacredness within them. Somehow we have, perhaps as Americans, we've become so disconnected that we don't feel the earth, like perhaps it would, it's like the earth is always nurturing. The earth really makes us feel good. We, and we know that because when things bother us, we say, I've got to take a walk. So you take a walk in the woods, you take a walk along the beach, 
And all of that is the beautifulness that we all need. We are nurtured by it. So creating a sacred space for each of us, for every person can say, what on the earth makes me feel good? What nurtures me from the earth? And then, of course, we have different religions and different ways of, of looking at sacredness. So if, if you, you can express and bring all that, that is sacred to you, that nurtures you, and bring that into your space so that when you walk through your home, you can see these things. See, I know that some many of us view the word sacred as being from a spiritual or religious tradition, and that atmosphere is what's being transmitted in a sacred space. One thinks of a cathedral, a temple, you know, monastery as a sacred space. So when you are talking about bringing in sacred space in this articulation, you're speaking it both uh, from a religious and spiritual, but also from the point of view of the earth, bringing earth in. Yes, because the earth is sacred. You know, the ocean is sacred. The winds are sacred. The trees are sacred. And certainly, we, for, we tend to, sometimes people forget. We are so busy that we forget that the earth is there. I had a, a client one time, and he was so tense. And after the session, he felt very relaxed. And he said, well, how can I maintain this? And uh, so I said, well, you go through this park every day to go to work. And why don't you, every day when you go through the park, just give thanks for the trees and just take, a no- take notice of them, their beauty. And he said, trees? It's like he was totally unaware of the trees in the park. He had just zoomed by on his way to work, thinking of what he was going to do that day. And then getting home, he, you know, zoomed home through the park again. And he never really took notice. We say, take time and smell the roses. That's what we want people to do. And we want people to bring all all that nurtures you of the earth. Bring that also into your house so that you can become a part of that. You know, when we know that little boys, they bring frogs and toads and snakes, little spiders and rocks. They bring that. Why do they do that? Why do they bring that home? (laughs) Because it's nurturing to them. (laughs) And then as we get older, we said, oh, no, let's not do that. And so that's what I'm talking about. We need to have pictures of trees in our house. And, of course, we do. A lot of people do. But let's bring Let's bring all of these, uh, the earth, let's have that around us so that it gives us power. Like sometimes when you look at people, the, the Native people have an interesting way of looking at the uh, personality of a person. So they could be an earth person or they could be uh, a water person. And we do that in feng shui also. We have the five elements. And I talk about, in in the Shambhala Feng Shui Institute, we talk about the four elements. So let's just take one. Let's take earth. Well, let's bring, if if the person is an earth person, they might like some rocks in their house. (laughs) Nobody thinks, you know, there's a very, some things are so simple. There is a very, very powerful exercise of people that a couple can do. So many times I've used this with couples that say they really are having difficulty communicating or they have some issues between them. And one very simple exercise is go in the, go in the woods and ask for a stone. And when you see, and both of you together pick a stone and bring the stone home and put it in a sacred space in your home. That's beautiful. And what that, it's a simple exercise, but that can bring so much healing between two people. And 